Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! In 1996, Australia experienced the worst mass shooting in its history. 35 people were shot to death at a popular tourist destination in Port Arthur, Tasmania. A nation in mourning decided that enough was enough. A conservative government, that is right, a conservative government, passed strict gun control laws and bought back over 600,000 guns already in circulation in this gun-loving nation. In the decade that followed, gun homicides fell 59% and gun suicides plummeted 65% according to one study. Here to tell us all about it is Tim Fisher, the deputy prime minister at the time who helped to get the measures passed. Mr. Fisher, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Greetings, Farid and CNN. Um, when people think about the rest of the world, they tend to think that uh, countries outside of the United States have a very different culture uh, uh, and attitude towards guns. But Australia is not so different. It's a settler society with a frontier culture, and people have a long and proud history of gun ownership. Uh, w was that hard? To, was it hard to introduce the kind of measures you did, given that culture? It was hard, but uh, John Howard, the then Prime Minister, and myself as Deputy Prime Minister, uh, we just had to muscle up, we had to make a set of decisions uh, and negotiate with the states and then take the arguments to the public square full on. And step by step, uh, uh, John Howard, myself and many others uh, won the arguments, notwithstanding some intervention by the NRA into the Australian scene uh, to uh, try and upend our efforts down here. Uh, the part of the country you came, uh, come from is actually particularly proud of its, of its guns and, and the gun culture. Were you, um, w what was the argument you made to, to people who had uh, guns? You're a farmer yourself, you, you're a gun owner yourself? Yes, I am. I'm a Vietnam veteran as well, and I speak to you just a few kilometers from uh, gun shops in Aubrey, Wodonga. Uh, and we, we have a law-abiding gun culture in this country. I am not anti-gun. I do not hate guns. There is a proper role for guns for Australian farmers to this day and continuing. But we have drained the suburbs and towns of Australia uh, of semi-automatics most notably and of course automatics. And that is a good thing and it stacks up when you see uh, the outcome in terms of no mass gun shootings for 21 years since 1996. You think the fundamental thing that is lacking is courage among America's uh, politicians. I've heard you say that before, correct? I realize I respect the democracy and I respect the Second Amendment uh, as it is printed, as it is worded, including its mention of the word militia. But uh, there are times, in one sense, uh, it's always difficult to find the exact right time, but I sense this particular period, this few days uh, after this mass shooting uh, in Vegas, 10-1, Vegas 10-1, uh, 1st of October, over 50 people cut down, over 500 wounded. Uh, you just cannot do nothing in that circumstance. And I uh, note uh, in recent times, you've had several former presidents join together for the uh, hurricane relief efforts around the USA, a good thing. Uh, the two Bushes, uh, Clinton, Carter, Obama, working together. What a powerful thing it would be if uh, five former presidents were to push for incremental steps to bring some common sense before there are another mass shootings across the USA. Do you, do you th are you hopeful? Do you look at the United States and are you frustrated or do you think something could change? Do nothing this time around and there will be widespread condemnation, anger, 
and in a sense uh, uh, a belief that the best days of the USA are gone and it's now approaching uh, dysfunctionality and a de democracy deficit of the worst kind. Do only one thing, deal with bump stock, and that's also inadequate when you think about it. Uh, why do you have to have unlimited sized magazines to go hunting, to go shooting uh, in a legal circumstance? And of course the answer is you do not. So whilst uh, uh, they, the NRA often maintain uh, that the problem is not guns, the problem is the power of guns, the number of guns and the availability of those guns in uh, circumstance after circumstance. And you fail to deal with that, it's going to have implications for your tourism industry inbound from uh, the rest of the world, the rest of the global village. Tim Fisher, pleasure to have you on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Farid. In our exploration of what other countries can teach America about guns, I want to bring you to a country that is the polar opposite of the US, Japan. As you'll hear in a moment, it is extremely difficult to get a gun license in Japan, and even mobsters are all but afraid to use guns. It's remarkable. Now, I'm not saying that America can ever be like Japan, nor should it be like Japan, but I want you to see this system because it has produced close to zero gun deaths annually in recent years. Japan has some of the strictest gun laws in the world. The basic premise of those laws? If you want to own a gun, good luck. Japan's firearm and swords control law states, no person shall possess a firearm before listing a few narrow exceptions for hunters and other categories. For the brave few still willing to apply for one, they face an intricately designed bureaucratic obstacle course. Just ask Rick Saka, a former US Marine who was living on Mount Fuji when we met him in 2013. He told us he was one of only a handful of foreigners in Japan to legally own a gun. Back at his house, he showed us the binders full of paperwork he's had to deal with over the years. They were a bit overwhelming even to explain. What all do you have to do? <laughs> it's, it's such a... Uh, for, initially, gee, do you want to help me? Saka took over 20 hours of lectures, a written test, a shooting range class, and he passed a criminal background check. A doctor gave him a full physical and psychological exam. He also visited the police station more than five times, where he was interviewed in an interrogation room. Are you having any problems with alcohol? Are you having any problems with drugs? Are you having problems with, with relationships, family, work, money? The police also questioned Saka's family his co-workers, even his neighbors. And to top it off, he had to give them a detailed map of his home. To produce a floor map of where your, your firearm will be stored in your home um, is kind of unusual. <laughs> and photos uh, that, that actually detail all of the locks that, that we have to have in there and show that it's done properly. It took Saka over a year to get approved. That's our actual firearms license. And he must renew his various licenses regularly. The intrusion that occurs with the process regularly would never, ever be tolerated in the U.S. It's a process meant to discourage people from even trying to get a gun. And it works. Japan has fewer guns per person than almost any other country. Less than one firearm per 100 people, according to one estimate. And the country's gun murder rate is astonishingly low. In 2015, this nation of 127 million counted only one gun murder. That's right, one. The US per capita gun homicide rate that year was nearly 4,000 times that of Japan. In fact, guns are so rare and tightly regulated here that even mobsters avoid using guns. Known as the Yakuza and often recognized for their full body tattoos, Japanese organized crime doesn't lack for muscle. They have reportedly had enormous reach in business and politics, once described as the largest private equity group in Japan by Morgan Stanley. 
but many don't like conducting business with a gun. Guns are like nuclear weapons. Weapons that the Yakuza has but won't use. A former Yakuza boss sat down with us to give us his take on the mob's attitude. He insisted on wearing a mask but showed us his tattoos and his partially missing finger, another Yakuza trademark, to prove his identity. Guns are kept and controlled by strict regulations within the Yakuza organization, so it's prohibited for members to take the gun out and use it. That's because punishments for gun infractions are very high in Japan, he says. Simply firing a gun can get you life in prison. And if a foot soldier in the mob gets caught with a gun, his boss can also be held responsible. So these days, the Yakuza conduct business using less efficient methods. There aren't specific orders on what weapons we should use, but obviously there's only knives or Japanese swords instead of guns to kill. Jake Adelstein says Japan's lesson for the U.S. is a simple one. If you make strict gun control laws, and you assign cops to enforce those laws, and you actually enforce them, the rate of gun deaths in the United States would plummet. But you have to do it.